This is the third video in the series on reading a JSON stream and showing it to the user in Visual Studio 2017 with C Sharp. At this point, we've received the JSON and we've parsed it into objects, and now we want to show it in a list box. So what do we need to do this? First, the JSON parsed into objects. If you haven't seen the previous video, I encourage you to look at my channel and take a look for the previous video. I'll have all of these organized into a playlist so you can watch them in order. Next. A static class or static method to hold our data. Now, why do we need static? Well, the reason why we need a static uh, method is for the third bullet point, which is an object data source. An object data source allows us to retrieve information from an object and show it in a UI component or many other components if we wish. Now, I've found that static methods are ideal for this. Static means that we can call a method on a class and we don't have to create an object out of it first. I like this because I have found that an object data source wants to deal with, guess what, an object. But that object might not be initialized with data yet, so you might not get the results that you want. It took me a long time to figure this out. There may be a better way to do it, do this, and if so, by all means, please tell me in the comments. I love reading the comments, uh, ones that are helpful, and ones that are happy and ones that tell me better ways to do things because then I learned something new. So static class to hold our data, an object data source, and a list box. So let's get to work. I'm going to go to the project that we've been working on, which is called Consume JSON. Just a moment. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to, sorry, go ahead and terminate it. Still running from our last video. And let's take a look at this page called Read JSON. It's kind of boring right now, so let's go ahead and add a list box to it. A list box, guess what, can show a list of items. Now you see Choose Data Source, and one of our options is New Data Source, and then Object. I'm not going to complete this, I just want to show you that yeah, right now we don't have anything that's going to fit for me. So I'm going to cancel out of this. We will come back in a moment. Our goal is to get that Object Data Source set up. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little class that serves as a utility class that's going to be the source of data for that object data source. So I'm going to right click on my project, I'm going to choose add, and then I will say class, and I'm going to call this one show plants. Okay, just like so. Okay, now show plants, I'm going to give this one a some kind of a um, collection. We'll say private static uh, list plant all plants. Now what does static mean? Static means there's only one of these attributes for all objects created of this class. A little tricky concept to explain if you're not familiar with objects versus classes. Of course I have a video that talks about objects and classes. The best way I can explain it is with an analogy. Uh, back in the 90s in Ohio, there was something called e-check, where you had to take your vehicle in for e-check emissions check, and they would, they would determine if your uh, car was in compliance, if it was uh, emitting too many harmful fumes and things like that. You'd either get a, a penalty or you'd have to put an adapter on your car to control that. Something like an, if your gas cap were leaking vapor, uh, you'd need to get a new gas cap. Well, uh, not surprisingly, this was unpopular with a lot of Ohio voters, and so all at once, e-check was removed as a requirement for registering a car in Ohio. Now, you think about my truck and your car. This e-check requirement was removed universally for all cars, whether it was my object of a car or your object of a car. That's something we can think of as a static method because once it was removed, it was removed for all cars in the state of Ohio. So nonetheless, that's essentially what a static method is. It means I apply to all objects universally. Okay, uh, now what we need is let's make uh, maybe some kind of accessor for this thing called all plants. I'll say, uh, well, first of all, let's encapsulate it. Uh, so encapsulation, one of the four fundamental concepts in programming, and there we go, we have our encapsulation. And now I'm going to say, okay, uh, give myself a bit of sp space here, and now I'm going to make a convenience method for this. I'm going to say public static list plant, so that's our return type, get plants. Open and close paren means we do not require any uh, parameters to be passed into this method. So public static list plant, get plants, return all plants. There we go. 
Okay, so we have a property, we have a convenient accessor method, and I'm going to choose save. One more thing that I would like to do here, which is, uh, which is a, a, optional, other ways to do this, but this is a good idea. I'm going to take that logic from our code behind that we created in the previous video. This is the logic that is actually uh, getting our JSON stream. And I'm going to put it in our convenience class here. Uh, one moment, show plants, there we go. But I kind of want to have this code run as soon as our program initializes. To do that, I need a static block or a static constructor. So I say static and then show plants. I will make a constructor just like so. And then I'm simply going to paste in the code that I borrowed from our other page. Okay, so a couple of imports we're going to need naturally. So using system net, and this is one that we grabbed uh, using Nugget in our last video, so using our JSON convert. Okay, there we go. So that now compiles. Now, what I'm going to do, this is going to run when my application starts up. Uh, we already saw, we debugged this in the previous video, we saw it did work as we planned. The only trick is that this plant collection is a non-static object. So I need to take the, par the objects parsed from JSON and give them to my static collection. Okay, so my static collection is this thing called all plants. So I'll simply say all plants equals plant collection dot plants. Okay, notice plant collection is a variable that's holding an object. We're getting the plant collection off of, or I should say the list of plants off of that object. We're storing it into the static concept called all plants. So now I save, and now we're done with this show plants little convenience factory thingy. At this point, we can go back to our ASPX, and let's try to make that object data source now. So I go to my list box, data source. We say new data source. Okay, I choose object. Uh, we will call this plant data source. Okay, and we'll choose okay. Okay, choose your business object. Now let's look very closely here. I'm looking for our show plants. I uh, don't see it just yet, so I have a feeling I need to do uh, uh, a bit of rebuilding. So just a moment, we'll cancel out of this, and I'll simply clean and rebuild my project. To save a bit of time, I did that build off camera. I just went to build and rebuild project, and you see now, sure enough, there is show plants. So I choose next, and now we have choose a method. Now take a look at what, what it appears in this choose a method option. Remember that little convenience method that I made? That convenience method was exactly for this choose a method part. Take a look at the requirements up above. Choose a method of the business object that returns data to associate with the select operation. The method can return a data set, data reader, or strongly typed collection. What is a strongly typed collection? Something that we see here where you have list and a generic identifier of plant. That is a strongly typed collection. And that's why I made that little convenience method so that I would have something that would appear in this choose a method dropdown. So I select that. That means when we're showing something, this is the method that we want to call. We can specify something for update, insert, and delete, but we're treating this as read only. So let's go ahead and put those to none and then choose finish. Okay, now take a look. Select data field to display in the list box. Let's go with common name. Select data field for the value of the list box. That means what value do we see under the covers? And for that, we'll just leave it at ID because ID is a unique identifier where a common name might not be a unique identifier. Something like Vinca can mean either a vine or a flower, two completely different plants. But an ID we know is unique. So I choose OK. And now I'm going to snap a breakpoint in my service class and we will just one moment i'll snap a breakpoint uh, right up here at the using and now let's go ahead there we go insert breakpoint now let's go ahead and debug and let's see what we get i fast forwarded just a bit so we can take a look sure enough look at what we have in our list box we have a collection of plants and we see chinese redbud weeping texas redbud those are our last two eastern redbud appalachian red redbud those are our first if we take a look Eastern Redbud, Appalachian Red, uh, Weeping Texas, and Chinese Redbud. Sure enough, we have successfully read these in, and we're showing them in our list. Uh, just to confirm, let me go ahead and refresh, and let's look. 
We see the breakpoint stops. I choose F10, F10. We get our raw JSON stream. We can mouse over and get a quick peek at that, or we can look at it in the variables tab. We do our JSON parse here, which gives us a plant collection. I expand on the plant collection, and we see that it has 19 items. If we kind of take a peek, we can see uh, several of these redbud trees. Uh, and again, this part I explained more in a previous video, so I won't re-explain it now because you can always go take a look. Now we take this object, we take the collection from the object, and we provide it to our static collection, all plants. So I go ahead and choose F5, and then here we go. You see with just a little bit of time and just a couple of lines of code, sure enough, we have now populated a dropdown with, or a list box rather, with JSON data. You could use that here, you could use it in an autocomplete, you could use it in a radio button group, any different series of things you can easily feed from a JSON feed as, I show, as I've shown you here. So I hope this has been helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.